Hi everyone, welcome back to the winter wonderland of central Pennsylvania. We've got a 2001 Jeep Wrangler to diagnose from Virginia, like three or four hours away. Customers said that it just runs like garbage. Engine's already been replaced. Uh oh, fuel light's on. <laughs> Might not run for too long. But, uh, it's really rough. It runs rough. He said it doesn't have enough power. And at least one cylinder is not contributing. Now, if we rev this thing up, pretty smooth. Now it's shaky. So, pull the trouble codes out of it. Um, the ASD, I was messing with that, but we have cylinder six, one, four, two, P0300. I'm not sure about injector number one. Uh, the customer said the coil pack is brand new, plugs are new, you know, the basics. Still runs like garbage. I'm suspecting a compression issue here. Now, the engine was replaced at 285,000 miles. Right now we're at 378. I'm, I don't know if that's the actual mileage. I, I assume it is. So, pile of miles in this thing. But the replacement engine has, I don't know if it was a used engine, but on this vehicle, I guess it has almost 100,000 miles. Um, let's see in the PCM if we have misfire counters. Okay, so under system test, misfire monitor test. Let's try that. Alters the misfire threshold sensitivity, diagnose subtle misfire events that are too weak, trigger an active misfire fault. Interesting. Okay, engine must be running. Okay. Try that again. Really rough. So we have to put it in drive. sensitivity and it's really thumping now well that's not very useful so uh, what I want to do is pull the ASD relay and just crank this thing and listen to it are we dealing with an engine mechanical problem all right so a little fuse box right here and ASD relay this one right here. So this will just disable fuel and ignition. Let's crank it over. That sounds really bad. Do, 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 do. <laughs> At least one maybe two cylinders are are missing as in low compression we could do a relative compression test um, on this style engine with the coil pack that covers all of the uh, spark plugs it's hard to do a sink because it's a waste spark system and it covers all of you know all the spark plugs so we can get the coil out of the way and just do an old school manual compression test one by one to see which cylinder is you know the worst um, you know the owner brought it here for a detailed diagnosis so we could say hey you need a new engine <laughs> um, or take the head off and you know do a valve job in a head gasket but we want to be a little more precise than that should we, you know is it a burnt exhaust valve is it a blown head gasket which one of these is 
the culprit. So let's go a couple steps further, get in the shop and uh, diagnose the low compression issue. All right, quick and dirty here. Relative compression test with no sink, just one channel. Amp clamp is around the starter main, you know, power wire, and one volt is 100 amps. That's the scale. So if it goes up to two volts, it'll be 200 amps. And we can just pop off the starter relay right there. Jump the two load terminals. This thing should spin over, and we'll we should get a nice waveform. So let's try that. Ready? That should be enough. Let's zoom in. So basically I just want to see how many cylinders are missing here. Is it one, you know, one or two or how many? So we'll get our cursors out. And we have six cylinders. Right? So let's say that's number one. I mean, we can divide them into six partitions. So, for two, you know, for two full events, we should have two humps per ruler. Just you know, just to see what's going on. So let's start with one, two, three, four, five missing. One, two, three, four, five missing. So it looks like one cylinder is completely MIA, like zero compression, or very close to it. Alright, so now I think the quickest thing to do is just remove the giant ignition coil assembly and then take all the spark plugs out, get an in-cylinder pressure transducer, and just go one by one and crank it, see what our compression waveform looks like. That way we'll have a direct comparison between all six cylinders. Now you could use a manual pressure gauge, sure that would get you to the right, you know, to the right cylinder, but it's cooler to do it with a pressure transducer, right? Alright, so it took a couple minutes. Coil is out of the way. I got all six spark plugs out. Let's see if we can tell which cylinder is misbehaving. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Out of all of them, uh, cylinder number five looks a little darker, but keep in mind this is mostly a problem at idle. If you rev it up, it will combust. So I'm going to guess it's going to be number five, but let's get the transducer out and do one cylinder at a time, see what the results show. All right, here we go. Pressure transducer is set up. It's on, so I'm in cylinder number one spark plug hole right there. And just for kicks, I want to do two channels. Channel one is going to be the pressure transducer up to 130 psi, and then the second channel, the amp clamp is still on the starter. So we'll see if the starter hump size corresponds to the peak compression. Okay, so let's jump the starter relay. Ready, and let's go. Very good. So 120 PSI peak compression, and there's our start current. So I'm gonna save each one for each cylinder, and then hopefully we'll find the culprit. All right, here we go with cylinder number two. So about 105. All right, cylinder three. Mm, less than 100, or about 100. Peak, so number one was the best so far. Here we go with cylinder number four. Not 
Not good. 60. Okay. Let's keep going. All right, cylinder number five. Wow, that's even better. Almost going off the scale, about 135, looks like. That's sealing great. All right, place your bets now. Last but not least, cylinder six. Right about. Oh, we'll give her 120. Interesting. Alright, so looking at the bore scope in cylinder number four, let's take a look at the exhaust and intake valves. Now it's just two valves per cylinder here, and you can tell by the runners which cylinder is which. So injector number, let's see, one, two, three, four. That's the intake port for number four. And so this one's going to be the exhaust. The one's closer to the oil cap. This is the exhaust for number four. And this one's the intake for number four. Well, let's take a peek. All right, we're using the Teslong NTS 500. Favorite bore scope. And with the side view camera, we can pivot it towards the exhaust or towards the intake port uh, or valve. Now, as you can see, they're both closed. So that looks like the intake, and if I pivot to the right, that's going to be the exhaust. Now the exhaust valve, I mean, I don't see any chunks missing out of it, but is it supposed to be that far recessed compared to the intake? So actually, the cylinder itself, if we use the head-on camera, it's pretty close to TDC. You can see it's actually very close, and the valves are closed, so it's a great time to do a leak down check. I'm going to put a, a breaker bar on the alternator here just to keep the engine from potentially trying to turn over. Well, we put a little compressed air in there, and we'll see if, it, if it's coming out the intake, or the exhaust pipe, or the crankcase. Alright, let's introduce some air into cylinder number four. Bump it up to like 15 psi. It's definitely leaking somewhere. So, you can check, is it coming out the oil cap? No. Is it coming out of the intake? No. It's got to be coming out the exhaust pipe. Yes, I can hear it. In the exhaust pipe. And keep in mind, it can also travel through the manifold to a neighboring cylinder. And it's actually going to cylinder number six. You hear how, how that pitch is changing. Okay. So, leaky exhaust valve. Now, using the bore scope, I'm checking all these intake and exhaust valves. So, for example, cylinder number five, I can see the kind of the brown colored one, that's the exhaust valve, and the bigger one that's open is the intake. Now, you can see how the exhaust is flush with the head. That's what I expect to see. Um, cylinder number six, you can see that one's, um, the intake is right there and then the exhaust is just cracked open but there's the seat compared to cylinder number three there's the intake there's the exhaust again that's slightly open see how that exhaust valve in number two it's flush with the head when it's closed we didn't see that in cylinder four we saw it like recessed by a lot. This engine is also making a ticking sound. So there's definitely a problem with the cylinder head. 
and I'm not sure a new valve would fix it because the seat's messed up. You know, see that one's also flush. That one's closed. Let's um, let's go to number four. Take a look at that exhaust valve. All right, so here's cylinder four exhaust valve in its fully closed position. Yeah. You can probably see the gap right there, that's where it's leaking. But look how far into the head it's recessed. I've never seen this before. What explains that? Did it basically destroy the seat and now it's hammering into the head? I see the aluminum, but I don't see a nice outline of the seat like we see on, for example, cylinder one. You know, is that the head surface or is the seat further in? Is that boundary where the seat is? Maybe not. Number four is messed up, like hardcore. <laughs> You're not supposed to be recessed into the head like that. Intake looks fine. But that's that's the main customer complaint. And if you have a leaky exhaust valve, keep in mind when that cylinder is on the intake stroke, instead of pulling in a good fuel air mixture from the intake manifold it's also pulling an exhaust gas right and the intake valve is open at that time and there's vacuum in the intake manifold all the time you know especially at idle so in effect you have this unwanted EGR um, flow back through cylinder number four because that exhaust valve is not sealing on the intake stroke um, John Thornton he had a case study like this with a burnt exhaust valve and this EGR effect, if you think about it, it's actually, it's not just a misfire, it's not just a compression loss, it's also uh, unwanted EGR flow. So you could have, you know, map sensor codes, you could have rich codes, just because of a burnt exhaust valve. So that's the problem with this Jeep. I'm probably not going to repair this thing. You know, the customer, well, I'm sure you can find a head and take it to a shop somewhere in Virginia, but you know it is what it is at least the problem is diagnosed and he's not going to fire any more parts cannon at it like coils plugs injectors none of that's going to fix this engine